Hello and welcome everybody. This is going to be a short video on Panopto and uh, what it is and uh, what it's going to be doing here at Southeast Community College. Uh, Panopto will be replacing Kaltura as our video server at the uh, college. And uh, going forward, the uh, rollout date has already happened. You can access Panopto in your Canvas course, or I'll show you how to access the uh, website directly, and you can start creating videos. And this will just be a short tutorial on uh, Panopto and uh, how to use it. We'll make a series of these videos um, on the different uh, software side of Panopto and what rooms they could be best utilized in at the college. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you might be wondering, where can I find this Panopto that Chris is talking about? Well, if you head over to this login site, uh, login.panopto.com, you can uh, put in your SEC credentials and down here where uh, if you log in, I resized my window here so you can't tell what browser I'm using. I think I did this in uh, Chrome, but uh, browsers like Firefox or Edge or Safari, I think are all fine. You can use any browser. You're going to want to use your first initial last name as the email, your identifier, not your letter, letter, number, number, number email. Uh, when you do that, you should see an error message um, stating this is uh, not right and you're going to have to do it again. So you just go back, put in your letter number, or excuse me, letter, first initial last name, and um, at southeast.edu, you're off and running after that. And then you click Next, and then you begin to, the sign-in process. And what it'll do is look for our Panopto website and send you through the single sign-on process. So that's why you're seeing the logo. You get the little spinny wheel here. Uh, these are all good things. Um, what you should eventually end up happening is you get to the normal single sign-on page that we're all familiar with. I've actually done this once before, so there's my account. If I had to do this on a machine that was utilized by multiple accounts, um, I could just sign in with my account and Panopto would know to put the videos in my account rather than the other person's account. Your Panopto library shows that uh, once you've logged into the Panopto website, it shows your videos uh, in order from left to right, the newest ones over here, so forth, and then on down the line. Uh, you'll have a folder structure that you can uh, look at over here on the left. The uh, search bar is at the very top for searching for your videos. You can also create videos directly from um, your website. You can also do this from uh, Canvas. And let's see if I show you that. Oh, uh, no, not yet, but I will. So there are times when you might be looking for a video and you don't see it. And you're thinking, well, gee, I sure I made it I know I watched it upload and everything like that well it might be there um, but it might not be within these uh, first few videos so in order to see all of your videos you can click on the see all button down at the bottom of the list once you do that the format changes to a list format and uh, you can have additional options to choose uh, just pictures, uh, the current way of doing it, which is a pictures plus details option, or uh, even more videos on the screen and uh, by doing just details alone. At the very bottom, you can also increase the number of search results from the default 25 to as many as 250 per page. That's a lot. 
Uh, you can filter it differently. So instead of filtering it by date, you could probably filter it by popularity. I don't have that uh, listed, but maybe in a live demo later on, I'll show you guys what that looks like. If there's a video that you just loaded, but you don't see it in the list, use the refresh button. It might still be doing stuff in the background, maybe finalizing on the Panopto servers, or re-encoding and uh, remuxing all those good video terms that everybody loves to talk about, and whamma blamma after a refresh, it showed up at the top of the list kind of thing. So keep aware, be aware of that refresh button. Here we are in Canvas. So when we think about Canvas and its connection to Panopto, uh, you can sort of think of Canvas as being in the house and you are looking through the window into the world of Panopto. Okay, so here you've got your outside layer of uh, Canvas and here's all the Canvas stuff that you're used to seeing. Inside of that is the Panopto world that we were just looking at. If you look at here, there's a lot of similarities between, oh, I can't do that because I'm recording this slide. There's a lot of similarities between the web page Panopto and the uh, embedded uh, page that you see within Canvas. They're not all the same. They're almost all the same. And I'll sort of show you some of the differences um, here in a second. So when we talk about why we're talking about Panopto, it's to create videos and create podcasts and to create video quizzes. Uh, so the create button is very important to accomplish that goal. Um, the create button's at the very top, top, right next to the search bar and you click on it and what it does is it expands and gives you all these great options right here. Um, record a new session, Panopto Capture and Upload Media will be the three primary ways in which you can uh, add content to your folders. You can also create folders from uh, the Create button as well. I'd also like to point out um, in this particular screenshot, I have administrative rights. So some of these options are not available to you. Uh, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure build a session and schedule recording and webcast are all options that are not available to you. I might be wrong on that. Um, the main point of it is going to be the top three, the record a new session, Panopto Capture and Upload Media. And when you click on the Upload Media button, the very first choice, it should prompt you with this dialog box. It's going to ask you how you want to launch Panopto. Uh, the very first time, if you click on that very top button, and if, if this is the very first time you've done it, nothing will happen. It's it's saying in parentheses there that you're going to have to install it first, which is the options below that. The Panopto uh, installer is the uh, Panopto there. This one here is the Panopto version that everyone will be installing. The remote recorder might not be available. This is another thing that I had admin rights to, so you might not see that one either. Uh, doesn't matter anyway, because we're going to want everyone to choose the Panopto recorder if it's not already installed. On network machines, this is going to be rolled out and installed um, so that when you log in, you'll see it on the desktop. If by chance you are on a laptop or something that uh, you'd like it installed on, go ahead and uh, choose the operating system that uh, you know you have on your machine. Most people, that will be this 32-bit uh, middle button right here, this downloader of 64-bit uh, of Windows. Mac people, they know what to do. They're over there. And here it is. After it's installed, you uh, click on the Panopto button, and it opens up the application. Um, from the top to bottom, you have create a new recording. You can manage existing recordings that you've done on the machine locally 
and then your settings, advanced settings like resolution and, and um, stuff like that will show up here. Uh, below that is the current session that you're going to be recording. Um, it's telling you what folder it's going to put it in. This was a developmental shell that I had opened up within Canvas. So it's in my sandbox. And uh, it put a timestamp of the uh, date in which I recorded that. All of this is editable if I want. I could click on this drop down button over here and I would see a list of all of my folders. I could also change the name in this section. That was one of the worst highlights. There we go. Whoa, all right, there we are. Close enough, that's my highlighting skills. Uh, and then uh, primary sources and secondary sources over here. So primary sources are your camera. That is usually your web camera. It might be your laptop camera. It might be the camera in the back of the room if you're one of the new rooms. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, the uh, document cameras are another camera that have been utilized uh, more recently. You've got options. That's probably where, what will show up here in the primary sources box. And uh, it will tell you what you are using. If you know you have a Logitech camera uh, you know, it might say Logitech camera right there. And the same thing with your audio source as well. So those are clickable boxes. They're drop down menus. Um, right here is a little drop down menu. If you're not seeing the camera source or microphone source that you think you should be, uh, you could probably change that option by changing it in the drop down menu right there. You can also change the quality of the recording. Uh, I've got mine maxed out here on Ultra, and that's another drop-down menu option right here. Uh, keep, I do want to point out when you increase the resolution of both your camera and your secondary sources, your PowerPoint presentations and whatnots, uh, that's going to also increase the time that it takes for the video to encode, the video to upload. Keep that in mind when you uh, go to create the video. If you have high definition uh, content that you want your students to be able to look at and that's important to you, you might want to bump up the resolution and let them know that uh, this is a larger size file and it might take longer for you to download this or view it and, and uh, maybe put that in the description or something. Your secondary sources are listed below that. By default, I think you always have Capture PowerPoint as an option. Um, in this particular layout, I had two monitors connected to this program, so it recognizes both my main screen and my secondary screen, um, and they are tabs that uh, students, your viewers, will have access to in the player. So uh, depending on what you have checked on here on the secondary sources side is what will show up back up these guys over here if you see these checked boxes then they will be recorded as well and they are clickable after you've started your recording so you can start have a primary focus of just your webcam and then switch over and add a PowerPoint or add your main screen, secondary screen, that kind of thing, um, or other video sources. If you by chance happen to have a secondary web camera connected, that will also show as a additional video source. Um, I would like to point out from my early testing that the capture PowerPoint option, um, what that's actually doing is taking a screenshot of your PowerPoint roughly four seconds or so into the uh, initiation of the slide. And it's just a screenshot. So for those of you that have built in animation, uh, if you have an embedded video, if you um, 
with like transitions in your PowerPoints, I would not use the capture PowerPoint option. Instead, I would just choose the capture main screen option or a secondary screen option, depending on how you have your PowerPoint set up, if it's in presentation mode, for example. Once it's done, the uh, dialog box will pop up saying, good job, recording complete. You get a little check mark for that. Uh, you, here's another place where you can actually still change the name. This is still editable. You can add your description here, like I mentioned earlier, with it being a large file, for example. Uh, if you didn't like the way it turned out, you could just delete it now and try again. Or you could also uh, say done, and it would switch over to this Manage Recording tab. And that's where you would see the uh, videos that you had done previously and uh, ones that we're currently processing. Um, these videos, these two videos have both processed. If they were still processing, these boxes, excuse me, these links over here would be grayed out or maybe not even not viewable. They show up once they are available to you. So you can't share until the behind the scenes work with the video going into the cloud has synced up and created a share link. You can't edit until it's fully available on their server uh, so that you can do nonlinear editing, not, excuse me, not nonlinear editing, non-destructive editing um, uh, to the video. Same thing with the view option. All of those are available after they've been processed through the Panopto cloud. Um, here's the view from the Panopto website. I had mentioned earlier the first video, the most recent video shows up at the uh, front of the list under what's new. And that does look different when you're in Canvas. Your video will show up at the top of the list in Canvas and it will go into the folder that you selected the recording on. This is uh, the second option. This is Panopto Capture. So now I've uh, clicked on the Create button from my Panopto page or from my Canvas page. And rather than choosing the first option, I'm choosing Panopto Capture. Panopto Capture is a browser version of the application. It will send the video to the cloud. It uh, does require a browser that uh, will, uh, it has to be a modern browser is what I needed to say. So basically you're good to go if you've got Firefox, Chrome, uh, Safari, Edge, all of the major players. What you will have to do, and I don't want to click ahead because these recording things won't let me click backwards, but what you, what you might have to do, and I'll show you on the next slide, is allow for your camera or your microphone. So you would launch Panopto in your browser. It would say, hey, uh, here's your web page that we're looking at. This is the Panopto web page that we're looking at. However, you're not going to see the smiling Christopher. You're going to see nothing until you say, I want to allow these uh, two things, my web camera and my camera. And then I would uh, be able to um, make a recording. It's pretty simple. The recording option is the big red button. I don't know if you can see that. Let's try this red. Okay, neither of those really. Okay, that's a big red button there. Also, you can share your desktop as well. That's this third option over here. Maybe this, you can see this option is the desktop option. Uh, so these three boxes are clickable. If I didn't want to have a microphone, I could say no mic and I could only I would only be recording my video. Same thing with the video. If I just wanted to create a podcast, for example, I would have uh, both this box and have it like this. I would turn my podcast options on by disabling my desktop 
and my camera, and now I'm only recording audio. Now I've created a podcast. If I wanted to record a video with desktop, that would be uh, all three options selected. And when, I don't know if I took a screenshot of this, I might have to do a second video. I'm kind of getting deep into this. We're at 20 minutes already. Um, when you click on this button, you should have options. Uh, you can select the entire desktop. You can select a specific program. If you have a second desk monitor, you might be able to select that as an option. That's going to give you your ability to uh, choose what you want to record when you're making your video. That's Panopto Capture. That will, oh, there we go. Hey, that will uh, then record directly into Panopto. So uh, sort of like I was saying, you click on the Panopto Capture button and you are uh, taken to this screen. I put these slides out of order. I didn't have a chance to switch them back. Sorry about that. So uh, you just click this allow button and now you can use your camera while you are making a recording. Once it's done, you'll be sent to this page. Your video is ready, and you can either make another video at this point by clicking on the Record New button. Uh, you can watch it again and determine if that is the um, way you wanted to do it or not. Uh, you can, of course, do your editing of the name and choose what folder you want to put in and also give it another description if you want in the description box. I think that's about it. Then once you click the send button, it goes into Panopto. Okay, so um, we're good. There's the video. It shows up in the front of the list, kind of like what I said earlier. Um, it placed, I've got it uh, set up so that uh, I can see my, well, this is the default setting. I can see what folder it went into under, kind of right here. You can see I've got a couple different videos. Uh, again, this was when I had admin access. So you'll only see the videos that are associated with your account. I'm seeing additional videos because of my admin access. And the canvas view. Same thing, video shows up at the top of the list and then uh, you can make another video if you want by clicking the create button again. Third option would be the upload media option. If you had a video that you made outside of the uh, ways that I talked about earlier, I'm thinking maybe a uh, GoPro or a phone, uh, maybe just uh, going over to the One Button Studio and creating a video that way, and you wanna upload that into Panopto, this is the way you would do it. You would choose the upload media option, and choose which folder. Again, you would have a drop down menu here that you could choose all of the different folder options. And then you could either drag and drop it or select the file and upload it that way. You'll see your progress bar at the bottom move across. Um, goes that way, like that. There we go. And once it's done, the uh, video will do things in the background like remux and encode, uh, create captions, all that good stuff is working. It's working on it right now. So you'll see a little bitty notifications once it's done uploading. And uh, eventually you will have access to your video. Here's another notification and the upload is complete and now it's processing the video. Um, so here's the video in my Panopto uh, site. Um, I'm looking at it still at the top of the list here, and it looks like it's still processing. It's not quite finished yet. Uh, once it shows up, once it's finished, it will have a thumbnail associated with it like this below it, and uh, all of the um, 
options will be clickable. Um, the Panopto program is uh, functioning and again if you did want to access it you are fully welcome to uh, basically the easiest way to do that would just go to would be going to your canvas course going to your navigation section and enabling panopto video uh, 